Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to another episode of Loom Wars. Loom Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jodi. Do you like that? I kind of like that. I love making these Loom Wars videos. They're the nerdiest of all my rather nerdy videos. One for the committed Loom Pigs amongst us, myself included. And I try and make them when I've got the right selection of pieces in the house at the same time, i.e. eight dive watches from a variety of different brands. Talking of brands, there have been two brands that have featured consistently across all five previous episodes, those being Seiko and Rolex. Now, I've got a Seiko here today in the form of Mr. X's Captain Willard reissue, but I don't have a Rolex. However, I feel I have got the next best thing. Pinch hitting for the mighty R today, we have its little brother, Tudor in the form of this gorgeous Tudor Pelagos currently on loan to the channel from a subscriber called Mikey. Thank you Mikey, you can expect to see a review of this beautiful watch coming soon. So a fair spread of pieces today, we've got a couple of big Swiss numbers in the form of the Tudor and my Doxa 200 sub, a few micro brands from Aquatico, Veer and Phoebus and I've got a couple of Chinese homages thrown into the mix as well, just to see if they can ruffle a few feathers. Let's flip the camera and meet today's contenders. The only thing I love more than a dive watch is a table with eight dive watches on it. What a glorious sight that is to behold. So they are placed on the table today in the order they're going to be paired up for the quarterfinals, if you see what I mean. So from left to right, on the left, hard left, we have the aforementioned Tudor Pelagos. I reckon that has got to be the clear and firm favourite to take out Loom Wars Episode 6. Certainly by far the most expensive watch on the table. These ones come in around 4500 US, I believe. They're about six and a half thousand Aussie and what a handsome looking watch that is. So, so striking. I love the dull look you get from the titanium case, crown and bezel and I love that really stark, crisp, white on black, snowflake hands. What a good looking watch. It's a bit of a David and Goliath pairing though. I have put it head to head with the San Martin Water Ghost. Their Rolex Submariner homage. These come in at around 220 US dollars. This one is in the queue for review. I like to use these Loom Wars episodes as a bit of a preview as to some of the pieces that I've got coming up for review on the channel. Again, I've heard nothing but good reports about these San Martins. It's also got BGW9 Loom and I believe the Tudor, is it BGW9? Is it Chroma Light? We'll get to that a bit later on, but that's why they're going head to head bit of a price disparity, let's see how the plucky San Martin gets on. And next up, I really did have to put these two together, didn't I? There is something delicious about pairing a homage against the watch upon which it is based, or sort of based, if you see what I mean. So this is the SPB 153 by Seiko. It's the Captain Willard reissue that they launched towards the middle of this year. It's actually a little bit smaller, it's a mill or two smaller than the 6105-8110 from the 1960s, 1970s. It is a very handsome watch and it should be considering it costs $999. The Steel Dive 1970 that it's going head to head with today costs about $125, so certainly considerably cheaper than the original. Again, though I've heard good things about the loom on these Steel Dives, let's see how they get on. Next quarter final pairing, you can see why I put these two together, I hope they're not a million miles away from each other stylistically. It's the Veer D5 Diver, again another watch that I've got in the queue for review. These come in at around $700 with a Swiss movement, $500 with a Japanese Miyota 9015, though I am trying to negotiate a bit of a discount for John reviewers. I'll tee that up in time for the review. Very, very handsome clean design on this one and I'm a sucker for Fotina. It's going head to head with the Aquatico Sea Star version 2. I've reviewed a lot of Aquaticos on the channel in the past and they've always been almost great but just missing the mark in one or two key areas. The Sea Star was a really good watch though. It was a bit more of a Tudor homage the first time around. This time they've gone for a slightly more original look. They've changed the hands, etc. But it does have that vintage style look to the hands and the indexes. A suitable contender to take on the Veer. And talking of Fotina, a watch that redefines the category, it is the Phoebus Proteus in aged steel. I reviewed this one a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't a massive fan of the original Proteus, but I think that is a good looking watch. The reason it's going head to head with the Doxa today is because it has two tone loom. It has C3 old radium plus a bit of BGW9 thrown into the mix. Now my Doxa 200 sub here that I've had for about six months now, 
it's actually got a sapphire bezel insert which is loom filled though blink and you'll miss it. The loom on the hands though certainly doesn't disappoint after dark, let's see how it gets on against the Phoebus. So first pitting then, and it is unquestionably the Tudor Pelagos with those signature snowflake hands on the left and the San Martin Water Ghost, not sure what they were thinking with that name, with this signature Mercedes handset Rolex Submariner ripoff on the right. Very nice initial glow from both of these. San Martin claim BGW9. Tudor do not advertise which type of loom it is, though it looks identical in terms of the shade, so I'm going to claim BGW9. Very nice loom from the bezel insert of the Tudor as well, as you'd expect for the the price that they're charging. All right, we're cranking it up towards the end of my first 20 minute session. I'm not gonna call it after 20 minutes, so if I can't call it after 20, we will go into a second 20 minute session. If I can't call it after a second 20 minute session, we will just keep going until one of them becomes the clear winner. They're both doing very well for themselves. I put fresh batteries in my torch again, my UV torch, that's probably a mistake. It really does show them to their best advantage, all of these. All right, we're now into the third 20 minute test period. We're almost an hour. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow them back down to normal time when the hands roughly come down to about 5 past 11, and then we're going to have a good look which of these two is more identifiable, is more legible, is more readable. It's clearly the Pelagos. It was a reasonable effort from the San Martin, but the Tudor is the winner. So the second quarter final pits Seiko against Seiko Homage. You can clearly see the steel dive has adopted the same Seiko patterning, the same handset and the same dial markers, the same indices, but they have added a fully loomed ceramic bezel insert and it looks like a pretty good one as well. So Seiko on the left using their own proprietary Lumi Bright Loom. The steel dive on the right, I have no idea what they're using. It looks like they're using at least two different tones of loom and there is clearly a disparity between the amount of loom on the hands and the amount of loom on the indices. Let's see how that plays out when we crank up the speed. Yes, as expected, the indexes on the steel dive do not make it to the end of the first 20 minute test period, but the hands most certainly do, as does that bezel insert. I reckon they've gone for C3 on the hands and BGW9 on the bezel insert, or some approximation thereof. The color mismatch really becomes evident the longer this goes on. Into the next 20 minute test period, you can see a bit of a slip from the camera there. Both watches still doing very, very well indeed. I'm probably gonna have to take this to a third test period to get a clearly defined result from these two. And once again, I'm going to take it round to about 10 past 11. That's a full hour these two have been glowing away. No complaints about the loom from either of these. I'm going to slow it back down to real time. What do you reckon? Which of these two is easier to read at a glance? Because that is how this competition is judged. At a glance, legibility after an hour. I think I'm going to give it to the steel dive. The indices are nowhere. They are long gone, but that bezel insert has made all of the difference. And the hands, I think, are glowing brighter than the Seiko's. Steel dive's the winner. Next quarter, and it is the Vare on the left against the Aquatico on the right. Now, they may be both going for a similar effect, kind of vintage style, but they've used different grades of loom to achieve it. Aquatico on their website just advertises vintage green. I assume it's C3 Old Radium. Vare, however, 15 layers of X1 grade Old Radium. Both glow initially quite brightly, but when I crank up the speed, there is only one winner here. Aquatico, the indexes are gone, the hands are gone, the bezel insert's gone, the Veer is the winner, a clear winner here. I would say the loom on the Veer is very good. I'm sorry, I had to do it once. The last of the quarterfinal matchups, it is the Doxa 200 on the left versus the Phoebus Proteus Age Steel on the right. Now you can see the two-tone effect from the Doxa initially anyway. It's got an orange glow to the sapphire bezel insert, but it doesn't last very long as you'll see. Much more prominent two-tone look from the Phoebus Proteus. It's got BGW9 on the chapter ring and old radium style C3 everywhere else. However, look at how brightly the hands of the docks are glowing. That is an ominous portent if you're the Phoebus Proteus. I'll crank up the speed and that sapphire bezel insert has gone from the docks already, as have the indexes to be honest as well. It's a bit of a disappointment, but check the hands in the docks out. They are not giving up nearly as easily as the bezel insert and the indexes did. Now, I don't even think we need to go beyond the 20 minute test period, but these two, a bit of a surprise. I'm going to slow it down and we can have a look at these two. Proteus, there's still plenty going on, but look at the hands in the Doxa. They are going to outshine the Proteus and no mistake, talk about snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. The Doxa 200 sub is the winner.
Semi-final number one then, and it is Goliath in the form of the Tudor Pelagos versus an even smaller, even cheaper David in the form of the Steel Dive 1970, the most expensive versus the cheapest watch on the table today. But if you have watched previous installments of Loom Wars, you'll know that money doesn't necessarily buy you victory. The Orient Kamasu at $200 won an episode, and the Citizen Promaster at $165 won an episode. We kind of know how this is going because we've seen the form from both of these watches before, so let's get on with it. Let's crank the speed right up and run through to the end of the first 20 minutes and then the second 20 minutes and it needed a third 20 minute test period to see the difference between these two. As time progresses though, look at the difference between the two bezel inserts. The Tudor Pelagos bezel insert begins to fade whereas the Steel Dive ceramic bezel insert does not. It is still far, far more legible I think than the Tudor even at this stage of the game and we're only halfway through. The indexes, the dial markers on the steel dive are long gone as per, but I'll do what I've done before. I'll get round to about five past 11 and I'll slow them down to real time. Which of the two can you tell the time on more easily here? There's still plenty going on with the Pelagos. There's still a bit of loom on the hands, the indexes and on the bezel insert, but it's not all that clearly defined in any area. And the minute hand on the Tudor has faded far more than the minute hand on the steel dive. I'm gonna give this one to the steel dive, a remarkable victory. Second semi-final then, Veer versus Doxa in two very, very different approaches in terms of the grade of loom they've used and in terms of where they've chosen to apply the loom. Indeed, we've had eight dive watches all taking very, very different approaches. Are the handset on the Doxa gonna be enough this time because the bezel insert and the indices sure as hell aren't? Let's crank up the speed and find out. So I'm gonna do what I've done before. I reckon these two needed 40 minutes before I was able to make a call, make a judgment between the two of them. So I'm gonna crank the speed up until the hands get around to about quarter to 11 and then I'm going to slow them right down and I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you think? I reckon the handsets on both are pretty much indistinguishable. I don't think one handset is particularly outpointing another handset. However, the handset is the only thing that's left under Doxa, whereas there's still plenty of loom on the bezel insert and on the indices of the Veer. Therefore, the Veer is the winner here. The grand finale, the Veer on the left against the Steel Dive 1970 on the right. 15 layers of X1 old radium on the left versus I have no idea, but it seems to have done well so far on the right. You know where this one's going. You've seen both of these watches twice before. The Veer, very, very consistent, very even in its application of loom across the hands, the indexes and the bezel insert. The Steel Dive, it's the hands and the bezel insert that are saving the day here. Very, very little application. A disappointing lack of loom really on the indexes. However, it's about legibility and I reckon 50 minutes was enough. I waited till the hands got around to about 11 o'clock. I've slowed it back down to real time here. There is still a fair spread of loom evident across the hands, the indexes and the dial of the Veer. However, I'm gonna give it to the Steel Dive. The bezel insert and the handset, mismatched though they may be, has got it this far and indeed it's gonna get it victory today in Loom Wars episode six. So there you have it, proving once again that it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. This Steel Dive 1970 is today's winner. The cheapest watch to have won an installment of Loom Wars so far at only around 130 US dollars. I'll leave a link to this one in the description of the video. It's on AliExpress. If you wait for a sale, add a couple of coupons, you should probably be able to get it closer to $110. Now, the straps that I've been wearing on are extra. This is a, a period appropriate Uncle Seiko waffle strap. It's a bit of a strap monster, this one. It's not perfect, this watch. It, there will be a few moans and nails with the review, and they could clearly have done a lot better with the loom on the indexes today. The logo is perhaps a little overbearing on a watch this size, but as a mod base, or if you're just looking for a cheap dive watch that's got great loom and a solid movement, a couple of hundred meters of water resistance, this thing has definitely been a bit of a surprise. Thank you for watching Loom Wars Episode 6. May the force be with you, always.